What's up everyone? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today I'm going to talk about how to make a liquid culture without using a pressure cooker. So there's plenty of ways on the internet on how to do this. You can try microwaving your liquid culture or whatever, but this is the best way to make a liquid culture and use it immediately without using a pressure cooker or an autoclave for that matter. So there's a few reasons why you might want to do this. Um, this is a very small scale setup and I was doing it to run some LC tests um, that I was doing over the summer. I'll be doing a video on that in the springtime once I get all of my tests worked out and some of the results. Essentially, it's really good for scaling up liquid culture production also, if you have a wife or a newborn baby and they don't like the rattling of the pressure cooker, if you're crunched on time, if you're making some media that has heat sensitive components like antibiotics, this is a good alternative. You can pre-mix your media and run it through one of these vacuum filters. So I will post the link to all of these items that I'm gonna go through here in the description below. Um, but if you hang in there till the end, I will teach you how to use all these materials to make liquid culture really fast. It's a, it's a tried and true method. Oftentimes they'll use this when they're making antibiotics. And I just thought it was a really good thing that the industry hasn't addressed in an appropriate manner. So once again, this is a very small scale system. You can buy way better pumps and better filters, but these were the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon. This is a polypropylene sterilized uh, half liter bottle. They come in full liters, two liters. You can hook these up to large carboys if you wanna you know, scale up this system a lot, which I'm going to be doing that at my new facility, but I just wanted to show you guys at a really small scale so I can explain everything and show it how it's done. The setup here is from left to right, we have a peristaltic pump. So those are really nice because you can feed sterile tubing through that pump and it will never cross um, the system. So it has these little wheels that kind of mechanically force the liquid through the curve of the aperture and that allows for you to transfer liquids continuously from one vessel to another vessel. Now I'm not going to be using sterile media because I'm transferring my premix into this reservoir system above the vacuum pump but I thought it was worth pointing out an alternative to this is that you can just pour your media from your media bottle directly into the reservoir. Um, that could get pretty time consuming if you're doing huge batches. So what I like to do is I'll pre-mix my media up in a huge five gallon bucket or 20 gallon steel drum. And then you can continuously pump that media into the filter unit. And then that way you can really scale up your liquid culture production. So, peristaltic pump. Pretty important, but kind of optional. If you're scaling up, get a much bigger one than these. This is perfect for the bench top though. So the next tool that we have on the bench top is this vacuum pump. So the, the idea of the vacuum pump is that it's going to hook up to this inlet valve on my vacuum pump system. So it's gonna suck air create negative pressure in this reservoir to force it through this filter. So this filter here is gonna filter out any contamination um, or any spores that might enter the system. So maintaining the integrity of this filter is really important, which is why I recommend this filter or this vacuum pump, however, for this size of a vacuum system. You can look up the recommended uh, vacuums on here. If you're going to be scaling up, this is kind of the most important tool 
to dial in. So you don't want to have too powerful of a vacuum or it's going to break all of your filters. And you don't want to have too weak of a vacuum or it's going to take, you know, 10 hours to filter a whole bucket. So um, there's a lot of good options out there. I'll post the link for this one. It's a good tabletop one, but it's kind of chintzy. So maybe um, I'll post a couple different links to some vacuums that I recommend. And then the final tool, which is the most important part of this system, is this vacuum filtration system. So like I said before, this is a reservoir. So the media that's unsterilized is gonna go in the top, then it's gonna be vacuum filtered, and then it's going to end up in this bottom reservoir here, which this is going to be the media that you'll be able to use for your liquid culture. So there's a few different options for media types that you can use with this filter system. I like to use a triptych soy broth, but right now I'm just going to use this uh, bacterial peptone to make peptone water. You can use caro and honey, but make sure you get filtered honey or um, dilute that caro down maybe to 2% because that sugar could build up on the filter and it's gonna make it go way slower than it needs to. So with peptone, it's a very nutritious media. So I like to use maybe just a 0.4% solution to get that liquid culture going. So I'm just gonna use two grams and 500 mils of water. And you can use DI water, you can use um, RO water if you want. This is just straight up tap water. It doesn't have to be sterile because you're going to be filtering out all those potential contaminants using this filter. So I'll just weigh out two grams of this peptone um, and mix it into my liquid media. So that's more like 2.5 grams, but it will work. Okay, so then I'm just gonna shake up this media and you can see how clear, translucent that Peptone water is. You can use a warmer water and that will help that media dissolve faster. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna use this. Now, it's really important to buy the sterilized media bottles because these, uh, the threading from the filter to the bottle could sometimes be loose. And if it's not a sterilized one, then you're gonna just be filtering water into an unsterile media bottle. So as an alternative, like I said, you can use the glass media bottles. You're just gonna have to pre-sterilize those first and then attach this filter onto the top. Um, but it's not that hard. you're opening these you're gonna want to twist this bottom just to double check that it's nice and tight and now that I twisted that um, I can show you how really cool and trim this bottle is so the the media is going to be filtered through this vacuum pump into this bottle below and I'll show you why I like using these peristaltic pumps because I can just set this so the bottom is going to be the inlet and I can just raise this up right here and it goes to the bottom of that media bottle and I'll just put that cap on there so no dust gets in 
and then I'll just line up this pump right into there. And then when I turn on this peristaltic pump, it will start to feed that media into the reservoir. So if you get, I'll try to get a close up of this while it's happening in real time. So the media is going from the media bottle through the peristaltic pump and into this filtration reservoir. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on that vacuum pump because you want to allow that liquid to build up so you can prime that vacuum or you're just going to be sucking air. So make sure that it has the volume of liquid completely surrounded and then we'll start the vacuuming. As soon as that vacuum is actually connected. Whoops. All right, so I forgot to hook up the vacuum pump, but you can see that now it's starting to drip through this filter. And the thing I like about these peristaltic pumps is you can kind of dial in that wheel to match the drip of that filter. So now I can walk away, go do something else in the lab, and I won't have to worry about that filter um, drying out from the vacuum. So you can see here, it's not the greatest pump in the world, but it'll do the job. So maybe this 500 mils will take 10 or 15 minutes, then I'll come back and cap it off with this nice cap. Alright everyone, so the vacuum pump is almost complete. I'm just going to go ahead and shut this off. And there's a couple things that you can do from here. So I'm just going to use a clean petri dish and cut a wedge to inoculate my liquid culture. So this is a kind of a sensitive procedure. It's very easy to contaminate, but these bottles have a very small hole. So I like to do it this way. Um, that, that way you don't need a stir bar. You could add a sterilized stir bar before you start this process, but that kind of opens the system. So I prefer to just use a big chunk of auger. Another option is that you can drill, pre-drill out holes and then add some injection ports and uh, syringe filters for air exchange. I'm not going to do this. I'm working on a new project on introducing uh, filtered air into my liquid culture systems to create a bioreactor. So I'm just gonna use this sterile cap that comes with the system. Um, and I'm just gonna carefully detach that so it's loose. And at this point, you can add more subsequent bottles if you had a larger reservoir, or if you wanted to preserve this filter for maybe another round or two, you can run water through this and just drain it into a big flask. And then that way, if there's any particulates stuck on that filter, it might loosen that up and um, help it from becoming too sticky, if that makes sense. You can also just fill this reservoir with water and slosh it around and pour that out. That works a little bit too, but these filters only are supposed to have one time use. So I usually will just discard these and then save the media bottles. They're still pretty good media bottles for future use. Um, if you have the glass bottles, they're even better because you can just sterilize them over and over again. Um, but anyway, I'll flip this around show you how to inoculate your liquid culture and then we'll close up that lid give it a couple shakes and we should have a liquid culture within seven to ten days okay guys i've got my almond agaricus mushroom this is one of my favorite mushrooms um, that i'm going to be adding into 
my production. It has a really nice nutty, almost like a pistachio flavor. So I'm just going to take a clean blade and cut off a pretty decent sized wedge. And like I said, I'm just gonna make sure that that threading is nice and loose so that I can just drop a big chunk of auger right in there. So you can see that wedge floating in there. And I'm just going to stir this around for a few days until we get some really nice mycelium growth. everyone I hope you enjoyed that video on how to bake a liquid culture without using a pressure cooker the really cool feature about this method is that I can inoculate this wedge immediately so I'm going to put this in the incubator and label it up and I should have a liquid culture within seven to ten days um, I still like to do my quality control just because there could have been contamination from when I dropped this wedge in, but stay tuned. In the springtime, I'm going to be running through my whole procedure on scaling this up and what my plans are with our new facility. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done yet. Give us a thumbs up, it helps the algorithm. Check out our Etsy shop if you're looking for fresh liquid cultures or stop by a Cherry Creek Farmer's Market this summer. We're gonna be having plenty of fresh mushrooms if you haven't seen our new video on our facility build out in Sedalia, check that out. And we're going to be producing a lot more videos this winter. So subscribe, stay tuned, and until next time, much love.